remind O Muhammad alayhi salatu salam for very the reminder it benefits the believers. I have not created jinn kind and mankind except to worship me. This is the reason that he brought man on earth. Shaykh Lusam Mithimi rahimahullah azza wa jal, he says that al-ibadah, it is everything that Allah Taala loves and is pleased with in terms of statements and actions that are internal and external. That is worship. It is a lot broader than we think. But there are certain acts of worship that Allah Taala obliged upon us that we must observe because that is what it means to be a Muslim. The moment you abandon these acts of worship, then your Islam is in question. Your Islam is in danger. And number one of that, it is as-salah, the prayer. Allah Taala, the first matter that He's going to question us about Yom Al-Qiyamah, it is as-salah, the prayer. If it's sound, the rest of our deeds will be sound. If it's not, the rest of your deeds won't be looked at. The ulama they take from this hadith that the salah, it is the key to your other righteous deed being accepted by Allah Taala. If your salah is not intact, your other righteous deeds, they won't matter. Allah Azza wa will not even give it any consideration. Five times a day we are called, even though we know our duty towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is no place on earth whereby your duty is known and every single time you have to do it, you are reminded again in a loud way. It doesn't happen for anything besides Salah, the five daily prayers. That means come to the prayer. But you will hear immediately after that, come to success. You can never be truly successful if you have disconnected from your five daily prayers. Many of us do not fulfill our five salah. There is no excuse to quit or to leave that salah, even if it is one. If you want success, short term, long term, in this world, in the next, you want contentment, you have to start off. The stepping stone is salah. According to one narration, Salah is the pillar of the deen. If you are to uplift it, you'll uplift everything else. And if you drop it, you've dropped your whole deen. And according to another narration, the difference between a believer and he who doesn't is actually Salah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu arda, when he sent a letter to his governor, he told him that establish a prayer amongst the people. There is no portion of Islam for the one who abandons the prayer. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu would say, whoever abandons the prayer has no religion. This was the stance of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu when it came to this great act of worship. Each prayer that you pray should be better than the previous one. You're observing the conditions, the pillars, the requirements, the sunan of the prayer. And if you perfect your meeting with Allah Azza wa in this world, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala will make your meeting with him hereafter a good one. If you make your meeting with Allah Azza wa in this world, one that you look forward towards and that you do your best to perfect, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala will make sure that the meeting in the hereafter is one that you're going to enjoy. What success do you think you're going to get when you do not observe the prayer? I promise you will not get any success in this world or the hereafter. Why don't you pray? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the difference between us and them is the salah. Whoever leaves the salah had become a disbeliever. If you care about Islam, then the minimal thing that you should offer is the salah. Why don't you pray? You're busy? You are busy to pray five prayers to Allah azza wa jal, in which each prayer would not even take you 10 minutes. You are busy to give Allah 10 minutes and you're not busy to give 10 hours and 20 hours and hundreds of hours to this dunya, you find it so easy to watch a movie or two for two, three hours. And you find it very hard to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal for half an hour a day. You find it so easy to play games in this dunya. You find it so easy to spend one or two or three hours. And you find it hard to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal for half an hour. You find it so easy to hang out with your friends for hours and hours, if not the whole night and the whole day. And you find it very hard to stand in front of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify him for half an hour. So why don't you pray? Too busy? Or you're too lazy? You're too lazy to stand in front of Allah azza wa jal. And you're not lazy for anything else in this world?
You are lazy for the one that gave you health. And you are lazy for the one that sustained you. And you are lazy for the one that gave you life. And you are lazy for the one that's given you and given you and given you. So why don't you pray? What's holding you back to enter the paradise? What's holding you back to wipe your sins? You're lazy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what are you going to tell Allah when you stand in front of him in the after? When Allah azza wa jalla tells you, did you pray? What are you going to say to him? Oh Allah, I didn't pray. Why? Because I was lazy. I was lazy, ya Allah. Do you think that's an acceptable answer? Can you see that as an acceptable answer to stand in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, I was lazy? Or maybe, Oh Allah, the reason I didn't pray is because I didn't have time. I was busy. I was busy, Ya Allah, that I didn't have time to pray. And that's why I didn't pray. Do you think Allah Azza wa Jal accept that answer from you? Look at your state. If the salah is proper in your life, then know that you are from those that inshallah will enter the paradise. But if your salah is improper, if your salah is incorrect, if you don't pray, well, what reason do you have to enter the paradise? It's either hellfire or paradise. And it's clear by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam statement, your salah is your first step into the paradise. No salah, no paradise. No salah, hellfire. Is that what you want to end up in? Is that what you're working hard for? You work so hard to end up in the hellfire, do you think it's worth it? Let me cut straight to the chase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran very, very clear. We did not create jinn and the human being except for one reason and one reason only. Allah says we did not create you except to worship. But I look at Muslims. I tell them, do you pray? Nah, man. Look, yeah, look, I know I'm supposed to be praying, but I'm busy, man. Really? You're so busy? You don't have 20 minutes in your day to pray your five prayers. Do you know how bad and severe it is to miss one salah? This is the ultimate crime. Fix it. And do we really have to tell a Muslim to pray? If you're a Muslim, you want to pray. In fact, you should find in the salah comfort. And amongst us are those who pray, alhamdulillah, but the salah is not on the list of priorities. Whatever else is taking place is given precedence over it. Which is not good either. This Allah should be the focus, the main thing, the prime, most important matter at any time. Everything else must be secondary. Everything else, including acts of worship, must be secondary. But Allah Ta'ala tells us something in the Quran. He says, came after the generation of the righteous. Our people, they abandon the prayer and they follow their desires. So they're going to be punished by Allah Ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arda, he says, explaining this ayah, that they have not abandoned it completely. It doesn't mean they don't pray. It means the one who doesn't pray on time. Allah ta'ala equated not praying on time to the one who doesn't pray at all. Allah azza wa jalla says, Wailun. Wail is a valley in the hellfire. For those who pray, those who are heedless of their prayer, i.e. they don't pray on time. Allah Ta'ala is telling us, those who do not pray on time, that they are going to be punished in the hellfire. Then what about the one who doesn't pray at all? That is the path to doom and destruction. The moment we cut off that connection with Allah Ta'ala, Allah cuts us off.